Hey everyone, so today we're going to go over a string based problem asked at Microsoft called print words vertically. So the description says given a string s, return all the words vertically in the same order in which they appear in s. Words are returned as a list of strings, complete with spaces when is necessary. Trailing spaces are not allowed. Each word would be put on only one column, and that in one column there will be only one word. So in this first example, we're given a string s, how are you? And if we were to look at each word individually, we can see if we look at each word's first character, would be h, a, and y, that represents the very first string in our output. And then if we look at the second character in each word, o, r, and o, the second word makes up o, r, o. And then finally, W, E, U, and that's the last string in our output. So we're printing out each column of characters for all of the words in our string S. So to explain how to solve this problem, I'm gonna go over to the whiteboard and I'll go over some examples. So in this first example, we have a string S called to be or not to be. And if you imagine we split this string by spaces, we would be left with all of the individual words. And it's pretty much represented in this format, we can easily see what we need to return from our function. We need to return each column, specifically all of the characters in from top to bottom order for every column. So we would return T B O N T B, that would be column uh, zero, and then we have O, E, R, O, O, E, that's the first column, and then in the last column, we would need to return a space, 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 and then a T, so space, 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 T. The reason why we're not accounting for these extra spaces here is because in the problem description, if we go back, we can see it says trailing spaces are not allowed. So we pretty much do not want to take any spaces after our last index that has a character. So the very last character in this column two is T, so every, everything after T will need to be removed. So that's just an extra edge case we have to consider. So the way we're gonna solve this problem is we need to extract the word that has the maximum length. So this word has, has a length of two, this word length of two, this word length of two, this word is a length of three, two, and two, right? So our maximum length would be three in this case with the word not. And with this number, we're going to iterate over every single word after we split our initial S string. So if we were to split this, we'd be left with, and so we, we know that the maximum length is three. So what we wanna do is we're gonna iterate from i starting at zero, so i is gonna start at zero, and we're gonna iterate up to three. And this i number will tell us which index we have to extract from every word. And we're gonna do this uh, specifically zero, one, and two times, right? Because three, three is one based, we're just doing it zero based because we're gonna be accessing the individual characters. So with that in mind, let's start i equal to zero, and this i value is gonna tell us which character we need to extract from all of these words. So zero, the zeroth index for each word, so we're gonna look at t, b, o, n, t, and b. And so we're going to be returning a list of strings. So let's create a list down here. And we are going to build this string, T-B-O-N-T-B, -T right? And then once we build that string, we're going to increase I. 
So I will now move up to one and we're going to reset. And now we're going to look at index one for all of these strings. So we're going to look at O, O, R, T, U, and E. And so that means we return the string O, O, R, T, U, E. And then once again, we increase i. So i is now 2. And then we reset. But now we can see that this string 2 does not have an index of 2 because it only has two characters, right? So if we ever get in the scenario where i, i, is greater than or equal to our word length, what that means is we need to simply add a space instead of a character. Because if you look back in our example right here, we still need to handle these spaces for this second column. So if i is greater than or equal to w dot length, we need to return just a simple space if this is not true, then we return the actual character itself, whatever that character is. So now we're going to be looking at a space here, space here, space here. Right here, we do have three characters. So we're going to be looking at T, a space here, and then a space here. So by the end of this iteration, we will be left with the string space, 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 t, space, space. And so now all we need to do is strip these last spaces, right? Because we don't want these any, any extra spaces after our last character. But these spaces right here are fine. It's just the very last two. So we would finally just return once we strip the end, space, 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 T. So not too bad to understand how this problem works. Let's jump over to the code now and I'll show you guys how we can implement this. Okay, so we need to return a list of strings representing the words that are printed vertically. So let's just create a list of strings first and we can call it result. And now we need to take our string s and we need to extract each individual word. So we can say string array words, and we're going to split by a space. And now once we have all of these words, we need to extract the maximum length, specifically the word that has the maximum length. So we can offload this to another helper function. So we can say private int get max length, and we're going to pass in our array of words. So we can say int max, we can just start it at zero, and we're going to loop over each word, and we can say max is equal to math.max of max or word.length. And then we just need to return max. And so now we can have the max word length be equal to the function call of this. And we're going to pass in our words. And so now this is where the main part of the algorithm comes in. We need to loop over from i up to max word length. And for every iteration of that, we're going to loop over every single word in our array of words and extract each individual index and build our string and put it in our result. So we can say for in i is 0, i is less than max word length. And in here, we need to initialize some structure to keep track of the string we're building. So we can use a string builder for this. And after we do that, we need to loop over all of our words. So we can say for string word in words. And this is where the logic will come in where we check 
if i is greater than or equal to our word length. So if i is greater than or equal to our word length, we need to add a space to our string builder. If that's not the case, we add the character itself. So we can say if i is greater than or equal to word.length string.append an individual space. If that's not true, then all we have to do is append word, the character at the index i. And then we still need to handle the logic where we trim the trailing space. So let's offload this to another helper function. We can say private string trim right. And we're going to pass in our word. So I know that you could probably do this in newer versions of Java just using, uh, you know, string dot trim right or something like that. But I always like to assume that if I'm in an interview, they're, they're not going to want me to use that. So I think we have to implement this trim right on our own. So to do that, let's initialize what our starting index is. The way we're going to do this is we're going to have a pointer starting at the very end of our word, and we're going to loop to the left, going pretty much going to zero. And the first time we encounter a character that's not a space, we just need to grab that substring, and that will pretty much trim the right trailing space off. So we can say int i is equal to word dot length and we're going to say while i is greater than negative one we'll say if our word char at i if it's not equal to a space that means we need to return the substring up to that point so we'll say return word dot substring starting at index zero up to i plus one because the end of substring is not inclusive so we have to make sure we increase that by one and then one more thing is we actually need to make sure we're decreasing i at every iteration because word dot length is not zero based right so if we have our length of the word is six Right, we're gonna say while this will automatically decrement i down to five and so on and so forth. And then we can just return null out of here. This will always execute in this while loop, so we don't have to worry about the, uh, our function actually returning null. And so now we just need to call this trim right on whatever we have generated in our string builder. So we can say result.add, we'll call trim right on the string builder. And then finally, we'll just return our result. So now let's just make sure this code works. And there we go. So next, I'll go over the time and space complexity of our solution. The time complexity of our solution is going to be m times n, where m is the very maximum word length that we calculate in this get max length. And then n will be the number of words that we have in our string. Because we're doing a nested for loop, so for every iteration up to max word length, we have to loop over every single word. So that's why it's m times n. And then our space complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of words that we have in our string. On line four, we have to split our input string s by a space. So we're going to be instantiating new memory when we do this s dot split. So space complexity, big O of n. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.